Perfect. Hey everybody, it's me, Frankie French. Thank you for joining us again with uh, Just Jokes. Oh, you got the sign. Oh, shit. Look at that. <laughs> I got to do something. Yeah. Oh, let me look at that sign. These signs ain't going to have this hold themselves up. <laughs> right, wasn't ahead. built today. Right, 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 right. right. You, had, you already know. Already. That's right. Already. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Frankie French, with Just Jokes Radio. And I have the illustrious and the amazing Nikki Moore with me as well. And tonight is another episode of backstage beyond the laughs and we have a very special guest i'm very excited about this person very excited extremely excited right you hold side man yeah, dude, dude, look at you. oh damn dude, look at that uh, oh shit <laughs> yes. this is turned into a porno <laughs> yes. nice. as you all can see we have the incomparable Mr. D.L. Hughley, everyone, you know him as one of, he's a, you're a living legend. Ah, uh, yeah. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I laugh with people, you know. It's, no, uh, but you uh, are, though. Like, I think uh, that, that what we did was legendary, and we had a, a lot of fun doing it. You know, it's funny, we were just in, uh, two Sundays ago, we were in Peoria, Illinois, Richard Pryor, the, the, mm -hmm. the Peoria hadn't finished the statue, so me, George Lopez, Cedric the Entertainer, Eddie Griffin, um, Charlie Murphy, and Mike Epps did a concert to finish his statue. And now that we're gonna go on tour with that. Like it's gonna all of us are gonna go on tour. And it's gonna be called the Black and Brown Get Down. And this is it, it, but 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 I was wow. on stage. It was it, it it's very rare when you get to be on stage with people who who you know who are accomplished men and still love what they do just as much right. as they always did. Mm -hmm. And so it it was it was really like cause you know you see people and you kinda go, I wonder if they're gonna write it in, I wonder if they but it was nice to be on stage with people that just love this still as much as they always did. I've actually noticed that I've seen, but you know, watch a lot of comedy, mm -hmm. I go to a lot of comedy shows, uh -huh. and I've seen on an occasion where a celebrity comedian mm -hmm. will basically dial it in based uh -huh. off of their name, and they right. don't, you know, necessarily write, I don't know what they do, but they come out and they don't really give you anything. Right, right. And people laugh because of who they are. Right. What are your thoughts around that? Uh, well, I think it's like anything else. I think it's uh, uh, sometimes, uh, you cook uh, just to eat, and sometimes you make Thanksgiving dinner. It's just, uh, but but I think, ultimately, as a, as a performer, to me, you 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 never want people to leave, and not feel like that you were worth whatever investment they put in you. And I, th there's so little reason to laugh these days. So many, so few things to laugh at, and so few things that people feel comfortable laughing at. Talks, what do you mean by feel comfortable? I mean, I just think, I, th I think that uh, you, you have to, um, people, people will see a thing, like, like just for instance, what Hannibal Burris and the whole Bill Cosby thing. Mm. I, I think that comedy is unflinching, it's unapologetic, it is, but, but people get so uncomfortable and caught up. Like if you tell a joke on Facebook or on Twitter, if you say these things, people get so worked up that, that your inclination is to go where it's safe so you don't have, you know, these kind of ruffles. And I think comedy can't exist that way. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you, you know, it's almost like you have to give p permission for people to laugh at themselves and laugh at ir ironic things. I believe that it doesn't have to be uncensored. I mean, it doesn't have to be dirty, but it really should be unfiltered. Mm -hmm. It has to be because in order for like some of you you to me are brilliant and Thank I can't you, say it enough you are my favorite Thank because you, you are such a, a, a satir satirical wit oh wow. you know <laughs> I don't know I wouldn't call it that but I would I, I mean you your your wit is so like it's it's gritty it's it's instantaneous Thank it's, you. it's 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 brilliant Thank you it is for, for I mean not that I need a better word but it's brilliant I think that, well, I appreciate it, but I, th I think that comedy is connected to who you are internally. Mm -hmm. It's whatever Agreed. you got in your warehouse. Agreed. I grew up in a family of six girls and two boys. Yeah, but I can tell you grew up around old girls. <laughs> yeah. can, you, can you tell? Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know how I can tell. I can tell. Oh, thank you. I'm such, such a lady. I can tell. Okay, well, <laughs> Frankie Knuckles. <laughs> she, she calls me Frankie Knuckles. <laughs> She's a fucking broad, I think she is. <laughs> but you were a staple in my house growing up. My mom and my grandma literally lived, breathed, and we watched Kings of Comedy, and oh. I wasn't supposed to be watching it. Right, yeah, you were. We watched Kings of Comedy so many times, I can probably recite it from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah. And my mom, 
she <laughs> she was a funny lady, and she's passed now. But yeah. she would say if she wanted to like tell me a secret, and for me to keep it between right. us, she would say, "Look, I'm gonna tell you something." But I need you to keep this on the Hughley. <laughs> the da- yeah. I didn't get it at first. I'm like, what do you mean? On the DL. On the DL. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, okay, you're crazy. So I have to tell you that for her. That's sweet. That's very really sweet. <laughs> Who makes you laugh? People that aren't supposed to make me laugh make me laugh. I mean, people, it's easy to make people laugh when that's your craft. Yeah. People who aren't supposed to make me laugh do. People who take themselves very seriously. Charles Barkley makes me laugh. Uh, uh, Barack Obama makes me laugh. Uh, um, uh, the Klan makes me laugh. Uh, Ebola makes me laugh. It's just like things that aren't, people and things that aren't supposed to be inherently, and they're not funny in and of themselves, but I think I just, I, I just, I'm drawn to an ironic slant. And it's just, and I think that it, when you, when you, 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 you your, your gig is to carve. Uh, you know, a line of humor in, in things that most people can't see. So that's that's a craft I respect. So you know, it's almost like I, I expect you to do that. Right. You know, when I, I'm I'm prepared to laugh. Mm-hmm. But things that aren't supposed to be funny to me are the funniest. If you hadn't have done Kings of Comedy, who do you think would have been a good replacement? There's so many people. It, it was just it's so many people. I think uh, I think. Eddie Griffin, I think, uh, Earthquake, I think, uh, DC Curry, I think, Chris Rock, I think, Jamie Foxx. It's just, it could have it been, it could have been any number of people. The, the, the funny thing is that I think that not in addition to cast that, that I think were brilliantly, uh, brilli- brilliantly connected to who they were, I think we were cast that genuinely had, affin- genuinely had an affinity for each other. So. You had to like it. It, it was just uh, it was lightning in a bottle. You had to like and respect each other. You had to know each other. You had to. It was like you know you had to hang out. We were at war together, and so you had to really be comfortable with who you were at war with. And so it was a whole bunch of things that went into it. Who do you think are the up and coming kings or queens of comedy? Well, I think you know obviously uh, the Hart, Epps. I think Cat. I think, but you know. Um, I don't have the right to tell somebody what I, what, what, mm-hmm. like, I hate my comic school. That's not funny. Who the fuck are you? Right, okay. You ain't paying for it. <laughs> you know, I mean, we don't pay for it. Right, I dig that. Dude, like, I'm, I'm not, yeah. I'm not the, or, uh, the arbiter of who's funny and who's not. Like, that whole thing with, that happened with, uh, with uh, Artie Lang. Listen. I don't get to decide what people think is funny, but that's what he does for a living. I think comedy has to be uncensored. Now, I don't have to like it, but right. but if I don't defend him, then sooner or later somebody's gonna come for me. Right. You have to have the un uh, you know your, your your comedy has to be un uninhibited at least from your perspective. So I hate when I hear comics go, "That's not funny." Fuck you to decide what's funny. Mm-hmm. You're not the fucking king of funny or queen of funny. You, you, it's not funny to you, is what you mean. Right. But if that audience feels this joint up, you know, then who am I to say? Right. If you could talk to anybody dead, uh-huh. not Jesus. Uh-huh. I mean, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and ask him a hey, Jesus. <laughs> who would you talk to and what would you ask? I, I uh, my favorite. Uh, well, I would like to talk to Mark Twain. Mm. Nice. I would like to talk to Helen Keller. Uh, I'd like to talk to Gandhi. I would like. I mean, there are people that I like to talk to Crispus Attucks and go, "Why were you fucking with them white folks?" I would like to. <laughs> but but those, those are people who. What would you ask Helen Keller? Uh, how she could see when she was blind. Mm. Helen Keller said some of the most poignant things, and she can speak or or see or talk. But read some of the things she says. And how clear she was, and she was so specific and so clear that you could, that even her were I like talk to Marvin Gaye. Some of the things that she said were so transcendent you could understand them now. So how could she, how could she be blind to see the world better than most people with sight did? Mm-hmm. So that She's I amazing. would, yeah. I would. How long is. have you been married? Twenty-eight years. Wow. How, how did your marriage survive comedy? I don't know. Okay. How did my well? You need to ask how my marriage survived me. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a, I think I think that I think that I think that that whoever you're with has to see something in you you don't, and has to see you past. Have you ever seen a woman um, 
that doesn't want to give up a man because I'd hate to give him up and then he turn out to be the man I want him to be. Right. Why after yeah. I gave that motherfucker up? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Nigga, I invested this uh, shit in you, goddamn right. it. It's time, right. it's time for you to pay off. <laughs> right. And I think it's, it's like that. I think that you have to have somebody that who believes. sees more, not believes, that's a different thing, but who sees more in you than you're capable of seeing. Yeah, I had to give up my husband for that yeah. very reason. Yeah. I was selfish. When I decided to do comedy, I, I realized that it was my passion, and not so much the stand-up part of it, but the business of it. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And you know what? The fact that you said you were selfish mm -hmm. lets me know you're going to do great things. Yeah, because he... he now, you won't be a good human being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying... I think I'm a good human being. No, but... Being, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a business mind. And I'm, I'm an adventurer, and I'm, you know, I'm a risk taker. You can't be tethered to the earth. No, and I couldn't be tethered to him. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like being in a same-sex marriage. Yeah. The husband. <laughs> yeah. It turned into the husband. How yes. come you don't say? You say that? Yeah. Yes, I do. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> he just, it, it, he started doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and it just hindered everything that I was. So I decided that I wanted this more than that. You, you, you. To me, I mean, I can't say like I can't say why she's with me, I can say why I'm with her. She, she literally, I'm with me and I've done all kinds of horrible things and, have, and, 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 and I'm, I try to be as honest and unflinching about those things as possible because what I would hate is to be in a Bill Cosby situation where somebody says some shit, well I'm living a life mm. that is counter to who I am. Yeah, that's right. But I, I've never met, I, I don't know people, women in the Bible I've read about the same as good as her. She makes me literally want to be better than I know I can mm. be. Mm. So I, I don't know. When did you realize that? The minute I saw her. Really? Uh -huh. the minute so I saw the whole way. Uh -huh. Now, wow. she didn't know that, but I knew. I, now, I, I wasn't ready to get married. I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. But I said, I'll marry her and get ready. Wow. I'll marry her and catch up. I said, I won't. Let her I'll go. never see anything like her again. And uh -huh. I knew it. That's and she knows beautiful. I know it. Oh, that is a And I think that. that the only reason women leave or men leave is because they can. If you can tell yourself you can do it and you can fight your mind and your heart and, and do it, you, you do. But if What's you can't, uh, Pisces. Pisces. Me too. Yeah, when's your birthday? February 26th. Oh, my birthday. My, uh, my, 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 it's March 6th. My, my anniversary is February 26th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So who, who would you say that you'd consider a mentor to you? Robin Harris, oh, wow. T.K. Kirkland, mm. um, Michael Williams, um, who owned the Comedy Act Theater, mm -hmm. um, because me and Robin didn't close, get close to a couple of months before he died. Mm. And one time I asked him, he used to give me always a hard time, he put me on last, and it was just brutal. And he said, uh, "You one day you're going to have everything I could have, and I hate that in you. Oh, wow. And, and, and after that, we were cool. That's big. Real cool, but I, but I, but there are people that I just, I think are just, but just brave and brilliant and smart. I was just playing uh, golf with Cat Williams Saturday, mm -hmm. and what a, he's a perfect combination of genius and torture and flaw, and mm -hmm. and he he has everything that you think that in society would be a detriment, but in comedy is magic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that, that self-destructive, fucking on a high wire kind of. It's it's just a, it's an amazing thing to watch people see. It's, you know, you're gonna see something great no matter what. Either <laughs> either it's gonna be uh, something spectacular or something hideous. It'll be, it, but 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 it'll, be but it'll be something to see. And I think I think that that's a mm. a quality that just is amazing to me. And when it works, it just works on a level that I think Chappelle has that. I think. Uh, uh, the the the, mo the brightest guy, I think. Uh, I like people who have no size; they have no skin in the game, but they're what they are at that very moment. Like they're not. Like um, some people are beholding, beholding to what they were. Like if I was always talking about kings of comedy, right. I'd be oh, slave yeah. to the past. Right. Right. Some people are slaves to what they want to be. And some people are rooted in the very moment. Mm -hmm. If I'm thirsty, I drink. If I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm sleepy, right. I sleep. And, you know, I, they are what they are at that very, very moment. And I think that that's a, being able to harness that and to replicate that is, is brilliant to me.
and it's brilliant to be to know exactly who you are and what you are, and, and, and to kind of s subsist off of just that right th at that moment. That's brilliant. I'm stuck right now. I just want to follow you around. Ah. <laughs> No, you don't. <laughs> like Would you mind? If, are you guys gonna keep asking questions? Would you mind if I like change the shot and get close on him? Okay. Yeah. Because sure. okay. everything right now is just. Okay. You know. How much? Do you, um, how yeah. much time do you have? I'm fine. This you're is. Fine. A, this is. I just yeah. want to follow you around. Oh no, you don't. You talk. <laughs> Can I take a picture of the sign? Can you hold the sign? Yeah. I got. Oh, I that's got, perfect with the yeah, cigar. I love it. And that. the red. It's I beautiful. love it. Oh my God. Let me get some pictures here. Yeah. You look like you would have a fancy ass Chanel uh, fucking oh, hey. You really do. Make me look skinny. Oh, uh, well, bitch, I need a different phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's an ass. <laughs> she is, see? Total. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Is it good? I, I got Thank like you. Four. You know, I love that. I, 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 one thing I do love about you guys this time yeah. is that you're much, much more freer. Yeah. No, the, 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 you have some freedoms we can never have. Well, okay. I, yeah. Well, I think things are more acceptable. Like, that you could talk about, uh, like, I, the, the fact that, that I've watched comics question their connection to a higher being, hmm. or question their uh -oh. place, in the, is, exactly. is amazing to me. That's interesting. It's brave to say, I don't know. It's brave to say, I'm not sure. It's, it, but I think that young comics now have that ability. To feel comfortable within themselves yeah. and their spirituality and say, I'm You never heard a black guy say he was an atheist when I was growing up, or a black guy support gay marriage, right. or a black guy. Mm -hmm. You never saw, saw that. You never. Very true. They always knew that they had to. It's weird, though. It's like this weird conundrum where people are, as we were talking about earlier, are so sensitive. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are a lot more free with what we'll say or do or be a part no, of. No, you're, you're freer with what you pretend to accept. Mm -hmm. But you're not as free. Listen. Interesting. The, the things that make me uncomfortable and the, are really kind of what art is, is... is, is it's the idea that you could both respect and be drawn to a thing that makes you squirm. Mm -hmm. I think women have that a lot. Women in relationships like <laughs> a thing that makes them uncomfortable. <laughs> that, that makes I them... Agree. I agree. That is very true. The one thing you can never do to a woman or to an audience is bore them. Oh, church. That's that the one thing. But, I mean, I don't care. Why do you think you can never bore a woman? Because it is even a woman. This is no. I'm no. I'm just. We're just talking real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sad. And I know sisters so. are gonna not like this. Well, but when you are with a woman, particularly a black woman, mm -hmm. it's not. I like you. It's entertain me. <laughs> you got. You got. That's right. You got. Huh? You do. Yeah. It's. 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 it's you have to. Keep them engaged. Yeah. Keep them interested. Yeah. And Addis is like that. 50. Oh, thank you, though. Yeah, I'm 50. 50. 50. Oh, I'm yeah, that. I'm 50. You look, you look and I love being 50. You do. What's mm. better at 50 than I'm, 20? I'm, I'm almost 50. How so, well, you see, you, 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 you got a couple of great things, though. You, uh, you have a young woman's uh, look and an older woman's mm. angst. Mm. <laughs> you know how many women would not have left somebody that they were with just because yeah. Yeah. they didn't? Ah. I used to be that woman. Yeah. You know how brave that is? Oh, fuck it. I don't know what's out there, nigga, but it ain't you. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Look here, motherfucker. I'll take my chances. Look here. <laughs> a little bit of this thing. Way past the expiration date. How bad can it get? <laughs> it can't get worse than this shit. shit. Even if I'm in a homeless shelter, I'm going to look and go, nigga, I ain't with you. Right. <laughs> you know how fuck how fucking brave that is. <laughs> Nigga, at least I'm not here with you. Right, right. Oh. I'm cold in this box. <laughs> and that, that gives you solace. I'm yes. pushing this shopping cart. Happy I ain't washed my ass in three days. Nigga, but you ain't here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank Happy. you. Thank you so much that you so honest me with this nigga getting out of my life. Oh, thank you. How many children do you have? Three. Three. All mm -hmm. girls? Two girls and Two one girls. boy. How'd you survive girls? I don't know. I haven't yet, so we'll see. I tell my daughters this is true. No matter how long I live, <laughs> know that I would have lived five years longer if you were, if I didn't have it. That's true. You believe that? I swear. 
I have a little girl. Yeah. And she's trying to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. But she, but you say that like arti- she is trying to kill you. Right. No, she I say it seriously. No, no, it's not a she joke. is. Yeah, she's yeah, trying she's, to. Kill you. She's literally beautiful. Yeah, of course. Right. Just beautiful. Drop mm-hmm. that gorgeous. And she's, she's so funny too. Oh my God, she's. So funny. She told me one day, so I'm getting dressed and I'm putting on a shirt that may or may not have been too small for me. Right. What is too small? Whatever. It might have been too small. I was puckering up and the front a little bit. He's a little young. Yeah, 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 I like it. I right. like it. So I turned to her and I said, like this is a little small. I need, to, I need to take this off. I was a lot smaller when I bought this shirt. Right. She's nine. She says to me, did you get that shirt before I was born? Ooh, <laughs> like, uh, bitch, you've been fat right, all right, nine right. of the years that I've known you. This is, I done had a lot of mama for a long time. <laughs> right. <It's> not, <laughs> you have, not, I need stop. a time stamp receipt. Right. You it's have not, not yeah. ever. Listen, I ain't, I'm just tell, here to tell you, mama. You, you, yeah, you're you fat. <laughs> Let's not lie to each other. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? No offense. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah. crazy. What that they big man, big man, little coat. That's it. That's <laughs> yes, it. Yes. My it's son, one time. This nigga, this little my, my son. <laughs> How old is he? He's twenty. He'll be twenty six now. Oh wow! I, I know that because he, he has to get off my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Our little boy, stupid. No, but he really is. He has autism. <laughs> he really is dumb. He really is. He really is. <laughs> he, really is. <laughs> he actually is. But he has it like medically. Like he's no, but he's no, he's, a good thing. he's the best retarded dude I know. No, I'm serious. He is. He's the, he's the most, if you're gonna have a retarded Kyle, but he's the We love you, Kyle. He's the most no, he knows he's the most warm, loving Aww. human I've ever met. And he asked me, um, like like he is having a hard time. Oh, because he has he has Asperger's syndrome, which is okay. the, the highest one. Right. And he ha- he's having a hard time with girls, right. with women now. And sensitivity to touch and all that kind of stuff. Any he, any he, any he, and he's literal. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if a girl says, "I don't look good today," he go, "You don't." Like he doesn't know how to <laughs> to lie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's beautiful. If you're gonna be, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's beautiful if you're his mama. It's not as beautiful if you're his woman. Well, no, no, no. It's not. You're hideous. Yeah. You don't want. You don't see. And, and you, there's a certain amount of bullshit you got to be able to pull off with a woman. Yeah. It's just true. Like imagine Lester. No. Yeah. No. If you're first girl, it's a certain amount of line you got to do to a woman. Hmm. So I'm, I'm not talking about like in in, in like. Uh, 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 you know, in things that matter, but do I, how do I look? Like, do I look fat? Do I, no, you can't, it's a certain kind of shit you gotta. Do you think my sister's prettier than me? Yeah, all that kind that of shit you can't. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Yes, this bitch is, yes, you know it. <laughs> She's beautiful. I'm only here because five minutes earlier, she you were here. That's it. <laughs> he he, he'll say that. <laughs> he'll say that. He would say that. He doesn't. <laughs> And your mother said, you, you'll you find a girl, not nigga, not too sure, not a lie you. You'll find a hooker. Yeah, that's nice. Do you tell him that? Yeah, of course. You'll find a hooker because they're for hire, but you ain't going to. Ever secure until you, until you, a good until you, woman. Until you, until you, until you. Does your family think you funny? No. Really? I think they, my, like, they, my daughters really enjoy me. <laughs> and my daughters have, you know how, well, you, you have kids? No. Um, you're blessed. That's why you look so fucking young. Oh. Here's, here's the deal. It's the truth. Women, chicks, uh, my daughters used to have a thing for their mother. Like my youngest daughter always had a thing for me. Always. We always were very close. My oldest daughter now and my youngest daughter and me are all thick as thieves because now I'm the dude that they date. Right, yes. Yeah. They fucking love hanging out with me and I love having a pretty little old young thing around me. It's Aww. so nice. But my, mu- my wife is trying to break us up. <laughs> she doesn't how does she, how does she do it? She, she doesn't do? like, like, like. Okay, like I'm. I'll, I'll be here until Monday, uh-huh. and I'll get home. And Monday, um, I will. I gotta leave Tuesday on the red eye every because I'm doing. I do the radio show and I'm writing this book, so mm-hmm. I have to. So Monday when I get home, I will have a day with my daughters and a day with my wife. Mm-hmm. Now. She will come, and we don't really want. They don't really want her to come. I, I want her to come. But they right. don't want her to come. And then when she comes, she 
I don't want to go see this movie. And I don't want to eat here. And I don't want. They want to eat what they want to eat. They want right. to go where they want to go. And I'm like, fuck it. They I just. Run it. Yeah. And she is like supposed to be silent and just kind of go for the ride, but she won't. So she'll. And so they're like, tell her she can't come. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> telling your mama <laughs> she, she can't, can't come. come. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get anal sex. <laughs> <laughs> I feel her though because Charles, my husband, and my that's daughter, my daddy's name. Oh my god. Oh, is that really? He must be a good guy. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, my Charlie. husband is great. He's my biggest fan. Oh, my Charlie. best support system ever. Because I does he work? Mm-hmm. He works. That's why he's your yeah. support system. Yeah, he works and he's you know takes care of my daughter. I'm I'm home maybe fifty percent of the time, maybe. Yeah. And uh, there are they're like this, mm-hmm. and you know she'll come in our room in the morning because her room is cold, and, she, and turn the fan off, Daddy. And he turns it off, and I'm like, but I'm hot. We need to turn that back on. He's like, well, baby girl is cold. So so he got two bitches bossing yeah. him. Yeah, two bitches. Well, it's her bossing him. I don't get to boss yeah. anything. Yes, you do. Yes, well, you do, Frankie. It is. It's it's a, it's a little. Uh, uh, it's a little manipulative. Yeah, a little bit. I'm yeah. Bad for Charles. Oh God, he is not a victim. Yeah. Me neither. Like, me he is not a Listen, victim. let me tell you something. All my kids are home, and I talk all that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad the motherfuckers are home. because you know I didn't get to see him. I didn't get to see him. I didn't get to be with him. I didn't get to, right. and that's what she doesn't get. You raised them, so to to me, it's yeah. my renaissance. It's my yeah. chance to right to get all of them to see them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't see him growing up. When I when I. I was on the road, and I'm still on the road. I didn't get to, we didn't get to hang out. Then next thing you know, they, my son went off to college. They went, I never saw him. Mm. And then all of a sudden, she gets accepted to it. She moves to D.C., and then she gets accepted to USC, my favorite school, and she gets to come home. Mm. Right. And I get to have, Yeah. I'm going I'm to make Daddy's up for lost time. time. For sure. What's your, what's your favorite Bernie Mac memory? Um, how, after the Kings of Comedy, I probably, well, after, well, the truth is, I should. I was gonna say I probably should say, it, but it is. Uh, me and Bernie were very close, and me and Bernie used to. Uh, Bernie never really got his due. I mean, I, I, I'm not in a position to tell people what their allotment should be. Mm-hmm. And and certainly on the Kings of Comedy, he 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 didn't. He wasn't getting his due. He did from the people and from the audience, but he always, he never believed that he would get a shot. Mm-hmm. And he finally did get one. Right. But he, but imagine knowing how great you were and knowing how, uh, that because of the way you spoke or the way you, the people, you know, he's very urban, so people, mm-hmm. and we used to, after the Kings of Comedy, we would drink and talk all night and smoke cigars all night. What would he talk about? Nothing and everything. Ugh. Everything. Nothing and everything. He was a Bulls fan. I'm a Laker. It was just, just dumb. But we, I loved him. The saddest thing to me is that when Bernie died, I remember I had been, there were a couple of weeks before he died, everybody was like, he, they had this rumor, you know, like Macaulay Culkin, and he was dead. And so and we found out he wasn't. And I had gone on this hellacious run while I was on the road, and I said, I'm going to, um, when I finish this, I'm going to catch up with Bernie, because I know he's not doing what I'm going to go. And then he died before I could oh. do it. And so I, people, I remember when he died, uh, the first thing my wife said is, he knows you love him. And that, that was cowardly, because that's what people say to let you off the hook. Mm-hmm. How the fuck can somebody know something you didn't tell them? You never told them? I mean, I, no. I didn't tell him how much he meant to me and how much, how unflinching. Uh, first time I ever got a manicure, I was with Bernie. Well, first time uh, I ever. I, I was that. I yeah. thought that was some funny. I didn't know that you shit. dudes got man. I didn't know it. <laughs> what did he say? I'm going to give him my manicure. I'm like, nigga. Uh. <laughs> and he had a manicure. Did you get patties too? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know that was the And line. now I do that shit like it's a, I'll get a pedicure yeah. after I'm waiting for a pedicure, goddammit. <laughs> That's a must. I'm getting oh, shit. I get greased up, goddamn. You gonna touch me? <laughs> yeah, but he. Then I was so happy when he got. When he got, and I, and I think that he had done all he could. Mm-hmm. I think he had done all he could. I think. I just remember him being tired, and I never knew why. Mm-hmm. 
Was it, you think, because of life or because of sarcoma? Well, I did talk, yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. My mom passed from the same thing. Yeah. He's just tired all yeah. the time. But he never would say, like, we, I, how would we know what that was? Right. So, he was just tired. But. What's your biggest regret?